I think I'm going to have to stop. I wasn't expecting that. Hello guys and welcome back to the Volks Wizard channel. Now a couple of weeks ago we sadly said goodbye to British summertime but it's not all bad because for me for the next five months that makes it British Quattro time. It's the time of year when you can fully appreciate cars equipped with Audi's legendary all-wheel drive system. So over the next few months there's going to be quite a high proportion of videos on this channel featuring cars from Audi Sport like this RS6 or just normal Audis like this TT which has got Quattro all-wheel drive. Today's video is very similar to one that I posted earlier in the year that was entitled seven days with a new Audi RS3. Instead, it's going to be five days with a new Audi RS6. I have driven this car before very briefly at the end of 2020 when I did a comparison video with a new RS4, but I didn't really get to know it that well. So in this video, I'm going to learn its ways over five days with it and share what I learned with you warts and all. All we need to do now is wait for it to turn up. I know it's got the sports exhaust system, so all we have to do is just sit back and listen. Now, as well as getting to know the new RS6 in this video, I want to share with you what it's like receiving a very expensive press car and a sort of behind the scenes look. It may look really glamorous on Instagram when you see people posing with these £100,000 plus cars. I've just heard it going down the road there, but it's not. It comes with a lot of responsibility. Firstly, I've got to make content and that can take a lot of time and effort. Audi will expect return on their investment. And uh, yeah, I've got to make some good videos, do some social media coverage as well. Also, I can't damage the car. I've got to test it hard, but I can't damage it. I don't want to damage my relationship with Audi. They're one of two companies that will actually lend me a car, including Volkswagen. So I don't want to mess that up. The car's coming now, so I'll just swap it around here. And uh, I think he's going to back it in, so that's good. I think that's your taxi. Yeah, thank you. Well, it's nice talking to you. And you. Anyway, take care. And you, Mark. All right, cheers. All right, cheers. Good. Thank I'll you. Okay, have not. Yeah, he's got. Oh uh, yeah, thanks, mate. Right. Cheerio. Cheers. Bye. Now. Bye. That's the delivery driver going off on brand, and <laughs> okay, this is um, <clears throat> ultra blue. So yeah, I think I'll switch to a proper camera and give you a proper tour of it. Well guys, what do you think then? £115,000 worth of RS6 Carbon Black Edition. Six grand of that, these options we'll talk about later. It's in ultra blue, that's a free colour. It's part of the metallic range. If you want to pay more, you can have a pearl effect paint or you can have an Audi exclusive colour. But I think this ultra blue really does suit the RS6. It's a pretty colour without being too in your face. It's probably a little bit too conspicuous for my taste. My friend has got a silver one of these. We're going to go and see it in a couple of days. We'll have the two together. You can let me know which one you prefer. But if you like your car pumped up, then it's incredible. Anyway, being carbon black, there's loads of carbon. There, there. Hmm, there. And my favourite bit is at the back, which on some cars is silver. Trust me, carbon looks so much better because it's relatively subtle until you look at it and then you can see the detail in it which is gorgeous so being carbon black we've got black window surrounds black roof rails black badges we've got these 22 inch wheels which are standard so there's nothing out here that is optional apart from the sports exhaust which is 1450 pounds so it's got six grand's worth of options a quarter of that is made up with that we've also got the comfort and sound pack, just over £2,000. Probably seen as essential by a lot of people because it gives you the B&O sound system, although the speakers are really boring in the C8. You don't get the pop-up tweeters like on the old model, but it's still nice to have. You get the 3D camera, which with a big car like this is quite useful. And you also get keyless entry and start and something else I can't remember right now. So that's about 3.7 so far. Head-up display, I think it's about 14.50 and that's pretty cool a lot of people love that i'd be curious to know how well it works with polarized sunglasses so we'll work that out later on if it gets sunny ever again and we've got something that's very easy to forget we've got the city packs that gives you a load of sensors that um, protect you when you're driving in the city or actually when you're driving anywhere really because you've got the side assist blind spot warning system here in the mirrors which is really really cool so yeah a total of six grand worth of options what haven't we got then? Well, we have not got panoramic glass sunroof, which will put a lot of people off. And we don't have adaptive cruise control. That's part of the tour pack, which 
I think because of the lack of semiconductors hasn't been put on this car. So God, if you want ACC adaptive cruise control, which was standard on Golf 7, like really low spec models, like SEs nearly 10 years ago, you have to pay extra for it and it's not on this car. Without that and a pan roof, a lot of people I think will be put off this car, but actually the spec is pretty identical to mine. No roof, no ACC. We've also got air suspension, which again, mine has got. So the comparison video on that I'm gonna do, we should be really good, so look out for that. I'm having a bit of an issue with this door though. I thought it might have soft touch closing, like some of the early A6s did in the UK, but it just feels a bit sticky. But we'll see if that's me. There we are, it's just shut fine then. So yeah, uh, let's have a quick look at the interior because being a high spec Audi, it's bloody beautiful in here. So we've got some really good leather seats. The hexagonal stitching has been revised a bit into this. I know it looks like dumbbells to me. Not particularly exciting seats, but they do the job. We've got beautiful Alcantara down here, which must tie in with the pack that goes on the gear shifter and on the steering wheel. That's so unusual on a modern car, I love that. We've got some really cool RS mats, that's really nice. Illuminated sill protectors there. Textured carbon. Can you hear it? It's, it's rough and that's really nice across the top of the dash as well. Sort of leather dash top there. Now, when this model came out, the A6 Avant in 2018, I think it was very controversial for not having climate control knobs and buttons. It was all done through this screen. Didn't annoy as many people as the Golf 8 one because it's on a separate screen. Plus there's haptic feedback. It vibrates just like your smartphone. And it works really, really well from the driver's perspective. We'll just put your wrist on there and it's quite easy to operate. I'm sure a lot of people would still prefer knobs and buttons, but yeah, this is pretty good. It's minimalist in here, but it doesn't feel cheap. Some cars are stripped out of all the buttons and stuff and they look really plain, like the Mark III TT, but this is beautiful. Really, really nice. I'm looking forward to spending some time in this over the next few days. Right, I've got to forget about this car for now, because I've got to do some less interesting filming, but uh, yeah, I'm going to be filling that boot up in a couple of days and taking it for a very long drive. Well guys, it's still day one, but I'm driving the RS6 because my wife is on the way to her parents' house and I've stuck a GoPro camera on the back of her TT. This is how we get the car to car footage, which does add a lot to the videos. Because rather than having me talking or showing out the windscreen, you can actually see the car on the road. And I think with this RS6, even on a dull day, it should look pretty photogenic. So she just drives normally, which is, usually pretty slow that's fine because you don't really need to be going fast it minimizes the risk of stone chips all i need to do is sort of go around a corner fast and sort of catch her up and then you get that dramatic sort of shot which will be pretty seriously dramatic with this car i think well guys i'm now standing in a field in a very windy part of warwickshire getting some instagram photos of the rs6 because the car's clean the light's okay and the weather's not too bad as well. It's quite a famous lay-by because it's been used for some press shots before. I'm just going to fire away now, get some photos. Hopefully something will be worth putting on Instagram. it's about four o'clock on day one and because i'm filming the back-to-back -back comparison with the c8 i've got to get my c7 clean i've recently put some new tires on it i've had to do some miles to get them run in and i've got the car dirty and there's no point doing a comparison with a dirty car so i've got the outside to do it's getting dark so early now it's four o'clock inside though it's coming up really well i can't believe how well this car's worn it's got 75,000 miles on the clock it's gorgeous but is it more gorgeous than that? Well, we shall find out. This is a bit you don't see very often. That's 50 pounds of super unedited going into the RS6 for tomorrow's video. Probably gonna get through most of that, to be honest, but should be a good video. Well, welcome to day two of a living with the C8 Audi RS6 Avant. As I kind of suggested yesterday, today is a very important filming day. I'm filming the head-to-head comparison with the C7 
over there. Now I moved here to this house in May and it needs and has had a lot of work. Um, in time this will all become driveway but for the moment I'm having to stick the cars on the lawn. Now generally that's really easy filming one car on there but two big cars is pretty tricky so I was up at eight o'clock in the morning sort of taking out uh, this like metal thing that you've used for the base of the gatepost. God knows why it was there, it wasn't me. There was a tree and there was a rose bush and I just needed the space really to put the RS6 at a decent angle with the other RS6. Um, but as I said, all this is going to be um, turned into driveway soon enough when I can afford it. Um, but yeah, it's quite good because I'm quite obscured here. I think my neighbours who live over there kind of know what I do and they're okay with it. Uh, the lawn, which is fully weeds anyway, it's not really grass, doesn't seem to get too boggy, so I've not been stuck yet. So uh, yeah, that's it really. I'm in kind of a good mood because I've done all the walking around and all the stats and stuff, the hard bits. Then I'm going to have my lunch and do the driving bit, which um, it's a bit nerve wracking trying to demonstrate 600 -ish horsepower on the public road, um, but it's actually not about the performance of these cars. It's more about the chassis, which is a little bit easier, even though they're over two meters wide. So yeah, I'm going to have my lunch first, which will then give me a kind of good brain power to do that and talk at the same time. Well guys, we know the C8 is a bit faster than the C7, but could the C7 have a faster tailgate? Well, let's find out. Well guys, we know the C8 is faster than the C7, but could the C7 have a faster tailgate? Well, let's find out. Oh, a win for the C8 there. it's now three o'clock on a day two and I've been filming since about 10 o'clock had a little break for lunch but it's gone quite well the weather's played ball the traffic's been okay the cars have been good the equipment's been okay as far as I can tell I've not really been through all the footage but now I've got to stick it all together and make a relatively watchable video for you guys the hope is that it will go live tomorrow morning which is Saturday It's now eight o'clock and I've been editing for four hours solidly. I've just sent the video to render, which basically sticks all the bits of the video together, makes one file which can be uploaded. I've just been told that there's been a bit of a cock up on the catering front. So I need to go to Jilks's Garage Cafe to go and get a pizza. This hasn't been planned. This is totally um, unexpected because I was expecting to sort of edit for a lot longer tonight, but luckily it's, it's gone quite well and I think that should be the final version. Sometimes you spot stuff later on which means that you have to edit again and then re-render again but uh, yeah fingers crossed that this will be a good one. So yeah I've got to get in a car and go to Jilts. Well which car should we take? I think it's got to be the C8 RS6 so yeah let's get going.
Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. So the only reason we're here is because the food we were going to eat tonight was a bit mouldy, wasn't it? It was a pack of tortelloni, expiration date 3rd of December, and it's covered in blue mould. Which I don't think is correct. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is Jilks' Garage Cafe. You've probably seen this like loads of times in my videos. Um, we've got to get this pizza back really fast, though, before it goes cold. Absolutely. So, I think we've got the right car. Great. Nice to see you, Bye. Bye. And this is the pizza, it's called the Hungry Mechanics, and uh, yeah, it's one of my favourites from Jilks. There's quite a few you can choose from, but that's the one we would go for. And we've also got some garlic bread, so time to eat. Morning guys, welcome to day three with the C8 RS6. Well, the video processing didn't go too well last night. It's a big file, 32 minute video, and my laptop sometimes just crashes when it gets to the end of the rendering process. So. It's ten, uh, half nine now, it's uploading now, should be live for 11, which is peak time according to YouTube for my viewers, so that's fine. In the meantime, I thought I'd take out my frustration by going for a gnarly ride on my 20-year-old mountain bike. The Mark II TTRS. Such a brilliant car. It can be made better with a few mods, but out the box, it's it's pretty good, and they're so cheap now. Well, guys, we're back in the new RS6, and I've got my friend Malcolm here. He's been in videos before. If you've ever bought a car from me on a Saturday at my old premises, you probably saw Malcolm then. So we're kind of trying to keep that tradition going. Malcolm comes and visit, visits me every sort of month or so on a Saturday. Today, we're going to Caffeine and Machine. I'm meeting up with some other friends on the way. We're just going to meet them because they're coming up from sort of Oxford direction. So we're going to meet them before because I've got their tickets in the boot. But yeah, this is Malcolm. And Malcolm's still got his TTRS. You saw him pull up on the driveway in it. He's had that how long now? It must be four or five years. Just before you went in hospital for your heart's heart, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, you had a little bit of a fling with a Porsche, didn't you? But you had a little bit of a problem with it. He amazingly went out and bought a 987 3.4S Cayman Tiptronic one of the ones that can suffer bore issues and it was perfectly fine but you had a bit of another problem and that's why you're not driving it so much now tell us all about it somebody doesn't like it oh boy and why doesn't she like it too hard right and noisy no comfort yeah the things we guys kind of love about cars oh, sometimes they can be a bit too much yeah the good thing about my 981 is that it's relatively quiet until you put the sports exhaust on malcolm's non-sports exhaust 987 is really quite loud blimey that's wide um, so yeah, so Malcolm's back in his TTRS, and uh, it was his birthday yesterday, the 11th of November. How old oh, were you? TikTok. <laughs> How old? Uh, 78. Now. 78, right. Okay, well, he's got a heart pacemaker, so I better not floor it too much, but let's see. I'm going to floor it. Let's see what you think. You're cool as a cucumber, aren't you? Cool as a cucumber. Well, I'm waiting for my mate with his RS6, and I know it looks stealthy and silver, but it's not that. So here he comes, yeah, not to be mistaken for an A6 TDI. I've never seen one of these in silver before. 
Oh, look at that. This is pure glare. Look at that. I nearly walked into the road. Okay. Now you're alright. <laughs> I'm alright, mate, thanks. I might have one later, but I'm going to share this with Malcolm. It's Malcolm's birthday today. This is his birthday treat. And this is Neil, the guy with the Silver RS6. You're going to show us that car in a bit, aren't you? Yes. Have a proper tour of it, it's quite different to mine over there. Um, but yeah, time to eat. You'll eat all this one, you end. I'll share it with you. Doing, <laughs> one slice. Is that why you're so slim, Malcolm? <laughs> no, it fills you up, doesn't it? That's the problem. Looks good, though. Yeah, I'll switch you your think in the car, eh? Well, somebody's turned up in a press car and it's only an H1, which I actually am going to be driving next in the next couple of weeks. Who could it be? It's Joe Achilles! That's hilarious. <laughs> I've never been offered a spot at the front of Cappy's machine until I've been there once. I get it. There's Joe Kelly's taking a picture of the RS6. He's not taking a picture of that M5 though. <laughs> Which belongs to this man here. got no class. Okay guys, this is Neil's C8 RS6 in florette silver. I've never seen one in florette silver before. It's a Vorsprung model, so it's got all the bits mine hasn't got. Sunroof, adaptive cruise. There's no carbon, it's all gloss black. But it's got the black around the windows, black roof rails as well. I just think it looks so, so classy. It's also got titanium wheels, not black. Same Pirelli tyre, same 22 inch wheels. Interestingly, when PPF was fitted to it, the guy who was a previous owner to Neil went for stone ship protection here. So somebody knew what they were doing. It's just a shame they don't come with that from the factory. Inside, still got black mirror casings on the doors there. Inside, same seats, identical. Piano black there. Again, I'm surprised we've got the carbon here is it the same i think it might be flat bottom wheel no rs on the floor mat so no alcantara on the steering wheel and shifter once again guys i'm standing in the middle of a field getting photos of the rs6 but this time we've got the silver one with us which is really up my street particularly because it's dirty there are the two guys it's such a great spot here especially when it's sunny which it wasn't the other day when i was here people flying their model aeroplanes. So I'm just trying to get a shot ready for the Volks Wizard calendar, which I'm a bit behind with. It's mid-November now, um, but yeah, should have them ready for Christmas. So keep a lookout for that. Before Neil goes home, we just thought we'd have a look at the different suspension. Because being a Vorsprung, this car should have coil springs, not the air suspension. And hopefully you can see them there just behind the wishbone. Let's have a look at my air suspension and no, there's just a big sort of round thing there with a black boot on it. That's the, the air suspension. So I'd love to be able to compare them back to back because they should be noticeably different, but it's going to be hard to imagine how much better this one's going to be than this because with air suspension, it just nails the handling and the comfort. Morning guys, and welcome to day four with the Audi RS6 Avant. So as I said yesterday, I'm going away in this car this morning. When I want to go on holiday for a proper break, I don't go to the Alps or go to Mallorca or get on a plane. I just go to Suffolk in the UK. It's a very, very relaxing place, about a three hours drive from here. And at this time of year, there's no better car to take than the RS6 Avant because it's got a big boot. It's pretty warm this morning. It's mid-November and I'm in the T-shirt. But when I get to the North Sea coast, it's going to be really cold. So we've got to take jumpers and coats and hats and scarves and gloves. I'm going to go cycling, so I've got to take my bike and all my cycling gear. I'm going to probably make some videos, so I'm going to take my camera gear and we're going to go walking. So we have to take walking boots. That's a lot of stuff for two people for a week, admittedly, but we've got the space in this car. So over the next probably 20 minutes, I'm going to fill it up. You can see exactly how much it can swallow.
you're doing all right. I normally am used to putting a, a golf and that means I've actually got a few inches spare down here that are a bit of a bonus. It does mean though that the load kind of could move around when you're driving in a golf, everything's normally packed in quite tightly. Okay, we're on our way to Felixstowe in Suffolk. Got about 150 miles ahead of us, about three hours worth of driving. I've reset the trip computer so we can get a good real world idea of the MPG of this car. And I've got my wife, Kate, with me, who you've seen on the channel before. So what are your first impressions of the new RS6? Oh, I like it so far, it's very comfortable feels very luxurious. I like the dash. Looks like there's a lot to learn there, but it looks very clear as well. And um, yes, I think if I fall asleep between here and the destination, that's usually a good indicator for me. You've done a hint that I'm going to have to drive really slowly <laughs> and sedately. If so, I'll get it out of my system. just noticed a big difference with my old C7 and that is that this car's got the mild hybrid system which I've completely forgotten about because it's not really the first thing you think about when you drive an RS6 but if you go into the driving modes there's an efficiency program which my old one doesn't have and this car will switch the engine off when there's no load on the engine even if you're at sort of motorway speeds I've noticed something coming back in with the jolt and I thought it must be the mild hybrid system and that's what it is so I've got the rev counter more visible now and if I come off the gas I'm gonna do it now is it but yeah it just switches the engine off and you're just coasting along everything's powered up by another battery and you, in theory you're saving fuel well that's it it's off now and we're off here as well for Cambridge services so at this point we've done 75 miles so about halfway uh, 1 hour 21 driving 25.4 miles per gallon I've not been going that fast using that much throttle, so I reckon my C7 might be a little bit better, but there's not going to be an awful lot in it. But this is a little bit heavier, so it would explain it would be slightly more thirsty. Speaking of thirsty, I think it's time for a coffee. I've just made a really interesting discovery I've got to share with you guys. Now on a Volkswagen, if the lane assist annoys the hell out of you, there's a button on the end of the stalk, usually, not always, that you can press to turn it off and then you use the trip computer to confirm it and then press that again and you're all done. On this RS6 and presumably A6 as well, we have the button, but that's all you press. One press and it's off. Why can't they all do that? I know it's got to be on by default, by law, but that's just brilliant. Well guys, we made it to Felix Stowe. There's a big container ship there and there's a cafe. And unbelievably, in mid-November, there are people sitting out there eating. It's not windy and it's about 16 degrees. It's incredible. It took us two hours 40 to get here. We did about 153 miles, 25.9 to the gallon, which I don't think is too bad. Being a Sunday, we could make pretty good progress. So now it's time for lunch.
Well guys, it's now quarter past four and we've got to our destination. If you've watched my videos for a number of years, you've probably seen a few filmed on this forecourt before. It's not the end of the day for the RS6 just yet. Well, it's just gone six o'clock and we're off out for our supper. So it's only because this car's been so relaxing to drive that I've got the energy to do this right now. And we've got some awesome headlights to test out. Well, these are the LED Matrix headlights, which are really cool. Anyway, they've been on loads of cars now for quite a long time. When you get them on the Golf 8, then Audi have to do something better. And this car has got laser addition to the LED Matrix as well. So on the dashboard, we've got the main beam symbol, but next to it, there's like a star, which means the laser is on. As soon as it senses the traffic coming, it switches that off because that would be really blinding. But it still leaves a lot of the LEDs on from the Matrix, so you get a really good illumination. But this is next level. How cool is that? Of course, now there's a car in front of us, it's switched that off and it's blocking out the main beam. Now that's gone around the corner, it's put the main beam back on. But it always keeps a fair bit of the main beam on, <laughs> even in fog. But uh, yeah. Morning, guys, and welcome to day five with the new Audi RS6. As you can see, I'm not in the car, I'm on my bike. And the reason for that is because with the RS6, I can bring my bike here and have a great ride on this amazing autumn morning. I came in my Boxster back in April. It's a great practical car, love it, but I just can't get a bike in and come here. So yeah, okay, you can come in something with less than 600 horsepower and, and bring your bike. But if you love cars and you want a practical car as well, that's not an SUV then, it's really, really hard to beat. But right now on this road, I'm having a lot more fun on my bike. the RS6 is the maneuverability when you're trying to park it even with the sensors, the camera, rear wheel steering, it still feels like a big car but I guess it's just about worth it. I do love a good estate car because it makes doing things like this so much easier. It's got quite a low load lip, which is perfect for sitting on if you've got to put your boots on before a walk. suspension setup that's standard on this carbon black edition is that you can actually raise the suspension which is handy if you're going off-road or if you come across a flood so we've just done this by drive select it's gone up a few millimeters every little helps when you have to go through water like this and there you go it's not exactly an SUV or an all-road at this kind of height but it just means that there's less chance of damaging something going through water. Well guys, I'm back in Aldborough and you normally see some interesting cars here, but down the bottom of the high street, I saw this very matte C7 RS6. I thought it was an 
an RS3 or something when I saw it because it looks so small and it's so dull. It's dirty as well, it's got some Vosm wheels on it that don't look particularly massive. It looks pretty well used but it's kind of the complete antithesis to my very bright blue C8. What do you think? Sadly guys, the RS6 has got to go back to Audi very soon. And I realise I'm not actually showing you how well it performs. So we're going to perform a bit of an experiment. Let's see if the RS6 can be sufficiently fun to drive that you get it out of your garage on a Sunday morning and just drive it for the hell of it. Let me just remind you what hardware we have got to do that. We've got a 4 litre twin turbo V8 under the bonnet, 600 metric horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, 0 to 62, 3.6 seconds. We have got quattro all wheel drive. We've also got the sport differential, which is basically torque vectoring. We've also got rear wheel steering, which will turn the back wheels up to two degrees to follow the front, which makes the car feel a lot more agile. That's actually probably gonna have more an effect on the way the car drives than the torque vectoring. We've got eight speed ZF torque converter gearbox, adaptive air suspension, Let's go. I've got it in RS1 mode, which I've programmed to my taste. I've got the drive system in dynamic, the suspension in balance, the steering in balance, the engine sound in pronounced, of course, uh, sport diff in dynamic to give us as much drive from the back to the back as possible. And that is it. So yeah, let's have some fun. Now, as you can hear, it's not quiet, but it has lost some of the pops and bangs of the C7. But what you do get in this you don't get in the C7 is whistling from the turbos. When they're under load, you can hear, it sounds like a jet engine, it's great. So this road's pretty well surfaced, it's a bit greasy, but we've got Quattro, and this car just feels fab. It feels like you're in a hot hatch, which seems a bit strange with two tons to control. We've got pretty good brakes as well, 420 mil, they're lovely and feel some as well. Perfectly fine for the road. And yeah, it's not a perfect surface, but it's pretty compliant in this mode. Lovely damping, even on this air suspension, which isn't the sportiest setting, the sportiest option. You can get steel springs. This is still so good. You never tire of a V8, but it's just so far through the revs, you don't really hear it that much before you have to change gear. And it's pretty quick change in this ZF. If you're in the right mode, in some of the lazier modes, it is a bit slow, but in this one, it's great. It's probably pretty obvious to say it's super exciting deploying 600 horsepower in a two ton car. There's just something so exhilarating about making something so heavy and big go so fast so quickly. Oh no. I think I'm going to have to stop. I wasn't expecting that. Well, not only have I run out of time with the new Audi RS6, I've quite literally run out of road. I've been having so much fun. In front of us is the North Sea. If you keep on going, you'll be in Amsterdam. Now, it's fair to say the first couple of RS6s were one trick ponies, super fast in a straight line, but it kind of all fell to pieces in the corners. The first RS6 to fix that was the C7, and the C8 has improved the chassis even further to make it now a genuinely exciting and engaging driver's car so yes i would take it out on a sunday for a thrash what's even more impressive though is that they haven't lost any of the c7's waftability if you have this air suspension in comfort mode it wouldn't be too far-fetched to say it feels like an estate version of the bentley continental gt a car with which it shares 
its engine. Okay, the interior is not as opulent as the Bentley, but it's still one of the best of any mass-produced car. The looks are a bit trickier because I think they're quite divisive, much like they are with the Honda Civic Type R. There'll be people who would very much like to buy a car like this, but I think they'd be put off by the pumped up looks. Okay, you could probably tone it down on the configurator. This ultra blue is quite bright, but you can never get away from that brr, width. And that width is quite a problem when you're driving as well. If I was to be critical, I'd say it's a little bit too wide for the UK roads and RS4 might be a little bit better. Okay, it's got 3D cameras. It's got loads of parking sensors. It's got self parking. It's also got rear wheel steering, which helps you when you're maneuvering into a parking space. It also makes the car feel much narrower when you're driving fast on the road, but it doesn't actually make it any narrower. It's over two meters wide, and it does get a bit tiring being constantly on alert to swerve away from things that can damage your wheels, your tires, your mirrors. It also gets a little bit tiring constantly putting fuel into it, but if you can afford the £110,000 admission ticket, then that's probably less of an issue for you than it is for me. Would I buy one? Well, I'm pretty sure at some point in the future I will definitely own a C8 RS6, so I actually quite fancy a very late C7 performance before I do that. Having said that, I've already looked at the classifieds for these, and they're looking pretty good value at about £80,000 for some of the early cars from a main dealer with a good warranty and hopefully in a couple of years there'll be about £50,000 which will be about where I would buy one although we're going to have to hope in the intervening couple of years that super indebted comes down to a significant degree because it will still be a very expensive car to own and run but if you can afford it I think it's well worth it anyway guys thanks as ever for watching this Volks Wizard video if you've enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up please keep commenting keep subscribing and I'll see you for the next one very soon.